What is going on guys, Vanity here, back with volume 12 of the In The Style Of series, this time covering the sound of Kashmir Cat. This is the composition I'm going to be taking you through today, which, as you will all have seen from the title, is a remake of Wolves. Now, for those of you that know the original, obviously I've changed the arrangement round a little bit in this one, just to give you a taster of each sound within a 16 bar arrangement. The whole project is available for a free download, each channel is frozen, so please bear in mind if you unfreeze a channel and do not own the plugins I've used in this composition, it's going to sound pretty different. The download link for the project folder is listed and linked in the description. With some of the artists I cover in this series, I choose to recreate one of their compositions in order to give you all a solid insight into their production process that really cannot be argued with. Let's not forget Sinjin Hawk was the co-producer on Wolves, as well as the legendary Mike Dean and Kanye West himself, and another legend, Manny Malquin, on the mixing duties. The full credits for Wolves can be found at kanyewest.com forward slash credits. The message map on the screen is showing all of the subjects I'll be covering today. And note, there is nothing on drums today, as of course there are no drums present in Wolves, besides this kind of repeating snare pattern which I have covered. Starting with the About the Artist segment, which is pretty short, as Kashmir Cat likes to keep his life and workflow pretty private, which you do have to respect. It's actually quite refreshing to see a producer who just writes these amazing pieces of music and not get caught up in the trends of the times or get lost in social media. Kashmir Cat is a 29-year-old Norwegian DJ, music producer and turntablist. From 2006 to 2009, he actually represented Norway in the DMC World DJ Championships under the name DJ Final. He first emerged on the EDM scene in late 2011 with remixes of songs from Lana Del Rey and 2 Chains, just to name a few. His debut EP was released in October 2012 via Belgian club repository Pelican Fly. He quickly went on to join a class of producers weaned on the turn of the century R&B and hip hop alongside Ryan Hemsworth and his contemporaries on the Lucky Me record label. Kashmir Cat has since worked with artists such as The Weeknd, Kanye West, Britney Spears, Tory Lanez, Tinashe, T.Y. Dollar Sign, Kid Ink, Ariana Grande, as well as many, many more. His debut album is set to be released sometime this year, and I, for one, am really looking forward to it. I've been following Kashmir Cat since his remix of Lana Del Rey's National Anthem back in 2012. From watching his Snapchats and various videos on Instagram and Twitter, I have an idea of what he uses, Ableton. That's as much as I know from following him for the last four or five years on the software side. There are a few recent photos of his studios, which as you can see, contain loads of analog synths. He posts photos regularly from a lot of different studios. I'm confident this is his own setup, as I've regularly seen him using KRKs over the years. The other photos, I'm guessing, come from studios he's renting or working in with artists. There are a few synths that pop up a lot as well, such as the Juno 106, as well as the Roland V Synth GT and the Nord Lead. There's a Moog Voyager, the electric blue edition in the background here, which looks super badass. The price is pretty badass too. This almost spaceship looking device will set you back a cool $3,500. Fortunately, if you've not got that kind of cash lying around, there are emulations in the form of contact libraries that you can use to get somewhere close to the original sound. However, of course, it's never going to sound quite as good as or have the extent of the options that its analog counterpart has. Composition. This leads me on to my next point too. The main vocal line or synth line in this remake is coming from a contact library and I'm 90% sure this is the same one that Kashmir has used. It sounds like this, soloed.
The only difference I can hear between mine and the original version is that the original has most likely been run through some fancy outboard gear in the mastering stage which has really opened up the top end of the record. The main things I noticed with this recreation was how the main vocal line sounds real. It sounds almost like it's some kind of choir sample which most people believe it to be. Now obviously the sound is coming from a sampled choir but it's more how Kashmir Cat chose to compose a melody that interests me. Quite often when producers are programming strings or guitars or really any acoustic instruments they don't make the MIDI sound humanised at all which means it ends up sounding as it's been played in via a MIDI keyboard. For example when composing a guitar via MIDI it has to be processed very differently to that of a keyboard to emulate a human playing it. The vocal synth is not supposed to sound like it's been sung, but it is supposed to glide and have this almost angelic quality to it. And I like that they chose this approach. So the sound itself is coming from this contact library. The Soprano from Voice of Rapture. Now, I noticed that many people online were saying that the sound comes from this library up here. Shinavia Voices of the Elves. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of that library. But I did spend hours playing with both of these libraries, listening note by note against the original. The soprano it sounds right to me, and by a long way too. I couldn't get the Shinavia to sound close, but it is definitely an incredible library, and I would give it the edge over the soprano in any other instance. I followed this up with a fairly heavy processing chain. Heavy in the sense that I'm probably using more plugins than needed to achieve the same sound. To start with, we've got this EQ from DMG, rolling off the subsonic frequencies and taking a little dip out around 500Hz, just to remove some of the mud and generally clean up the sound. The high end is being rolled off around 8k with an 18dB slope, purely to emulate the sound of the original. Now, because this wasn't drastic enough for me, I added on this Moog filter, rolling everything above 10kHz off. I'll just give you a quick before and after of the Moog filter, so you can really hear what is going on. So first, we've got before. And after. You can hear that it's just removing the super high, almost whistly tone. This was probably done in the original to clear out some of the space for the vocal, but perhaps also to give it a darker tone. I follow that up with a Fairchild compressor to control the dynamics when the vocal hits the higher notes as I wanted a consistent level throughout the whole sound. I picked the Fairchild just to add some tone to the sound. I've cranked up the input and turned down the output to match in order to achieve this. Again, I'll just give you a quick before and after as it's making a pretty big difference to the sound. So first we've got before. And then after. You can hear how this compressor is doing much more than just simply compress the sound. It really does change the whole tone. I use vintage emulations for just that purpose, and I'd recommend you give them a try. If you don't own any Universal Audio plugins, Waves will probably be a safe compromise. I also know that the mix engineer for this track, Manny Maraquin, uses a fair amount of outboard gear, which is why I've included more plugin emulations of vintage gear than you will have seen in previous tutorials. The last plugin in the chain here is the Oxide Tape Emulation, which again, I'm cranking up the input and turning down the output to match. This is just warming up the sound, which I felt was needed after the Fairchild. I also really love the sound of good tape emulation plugins, and I've used this one a fair amount throughout this project. The bass line in the original definitely comes from a sample that has been processed. I love synthesizing my own 808 bass sounds, but they never get anywhere close in impact and weight to the samples that I've got. It isn't exactly the same as the original, but I don't think it's too far off. The original at first listen sounds like a distorted 808, and I'm around 80% sure that's what it is. The reason I'm not 100 though is because the distortion sounds so well controlled. It may even be a bass guitar run through some pedals and a cab. This is how my version of the bass sounds. I've also laid this with a kick drum, as that sounds like what's going on in the original. So together, they sound like this.
I've got a guitar rig on here from Native Instruments, which is just providing a slight touch of distortion. I'll just give you a quick before and after of that so you can hear what's going on. So we'll start with before. And after. So you can hear, even though it's a slight amount of distortion, it really does make a big change to the sound. As usual, I've got the trusty Camel Crusher on here too, which is doing exactly the same job as the guitar rig. I actually applied this plugin first, but I felt it wasn't adding enough tone to the sound, which is why I grabbed the guitar rig. I've then got the API 2500 bus compressor on here, mainly because I'm testing it out on bass just to see how it handles, but again, as with the Fairchild on the vocal line, I'm aiming to get that outboard or analog feel into this track. To complete the chain, I've added the max bass from Waves. This is something I'm always using on my bass processing chain. From the Waves website, they describe it as Max Bass uses psychoacoustics to calculate precise harmonics that are related to the fundamental tones of sound. When these harmonics are combined, it creates the effect of lower, deeper frequencies. There is a second bass line in Walls that comes in around 35 seconds into the original. This is definitely a bass guitar, probably played in by Mike Dean himself, if this Instagram picture is anything to go by. I've not recreated that in this track, as I'm really not a fan of trying to recreate acoustic instruments. They just never sound right. You can get pretty close, and I did have a little play around, but I just felt like it didn't sound close enough to the original to present to you guys. So the auto-tuned Wolf vocal sample is actually just a stock sound, which I remember finding online around the time Walls was released and thought that it may come in useful one day. There are other artists who have previously used the sample, for example in Kavinsky's Nightcore track, probably being the most popular. The original sample sounds like this. After applying some filtering, auto-tune and reverb, you get a sound that's a little more recognisable. There is also a sample from a reggae artist, Sugar Minyot, that's listed in the credits of Walls, titled Walking Dub. Now it only plays for a few seconds, around a minute and 25 seconds in, and sounds like this. Now you may have missed it, as it really isn't doing all that much, but nevertheless, it is present in the original track. The only thing that I've added, which you can see here, is a dub delay, as I've had to fade the sample to avoid hearing any of the kick and snare from the original. If the delay wasn't present, the sample would stop suddenly, rather than simply fading away under the rest of the instruments. The snare hit in this remake is the only thing I'm not 100% happy about, as it sounds a little far from the original, but was as close as I could get it in the given timescale. It's made from two hits. The snare hit, along with around 200 different drum hits, are from my Kashmir Cat sample pack, which is listed and linked in the description for you guys. The second is a snare from the same track that the dub delay was sampled from. Together, they sound like this. I have taken one of the snare rolls out, as there should be two in this pattern if we're keeping it the same as the original. As the snare isn't 100% correct, the second snare roll just sounded off to me, and it really threw off the rest of the track. Apart from that though, the pattern is exactly the same. The processing consists of a spring reverb, however, don't let the old school interface put you off, this is a real great reverb. I chose a spring, as that's what it sounds like being used in the original. Now spring reverbs are pretty common in reggae, so after that dub sound effect, it fits together quite nicely. Some people online were speculating that the snare drum was sampled from the same track as the dub delay sound was. However, I spent a few hours playing with it and I couldn't get it to sound alike. So unless there is a different version of the reggae track that I'm not aware of, it certainly isn't from that same track. Following the reverb, I've got a 1072, just applying a little boost around the 2kHz area, shaping the sound into something a little more similar to the original. That is followed by the Octide Tape emulation again, boosting the input and reducing the output just to add some warmth to the sound. 
So the last thing I wanted to mention before we get into the mastering and the key takeaways are Kashmir Cat's kind of signature vocal sliding synths. Now Kashmir Cat is of course well known for his vocal synths, similar to the one in this project. The only difference is that he'll find a sample from an acapella, drop it into a sampler, turn on the glide or portamento and compose a similar midi riff. The important thing to remember is to overlap the notes to get that gliding effect. In case anyone brings up this topic, as of course the contact library has been used in this instance, the process is exactly the same, it's only the source sound that changes. Alright, moving on to the mastering. I've given the mastering chain a little rethink and I've actually added in some new plugins. To kick things off, I've got the standard BX control from Brainworks, converting everything under 250Hz into mono and boosting the stereo width of the track by 25%. I've then got the Manly EQ, which is the newest addition to the chain. I've always been a sucker for tube outboard and universal audio really do craft the best emulations. I'm just using it as a low pass and high pass filter, but as with all the analog emulations I'm running, it's doing much more than just that. I swapped out the Slate digital tape emulation for this Oxide one. I'm still playing with both of them, but the Oxide had the edge on this track. I'm just using it to add a warm tone to the track as I have been throughout the whole record, but only very slightly on this mastering chain. I've then got the staple PSP old timers, as always, one compressed in the sides and one compressed in the middle of the track, both set to exactly the same compression settings. I've then got the Shadow Hills mastering compressor, which is probably the best looking plugin I've ever used. I mean, this compressor kind of goes without saying, it really is one of the best, if not the best, for having on your master bus. I've not been fortunate enough yet to have a play with the real thing, so I can't comment on how close it sounds to the original piece of equipment. I just know that I really like how it sounded and what it did to this track. You have a couple of options with this compressor too, between an optical and a discrete. Optical compressors generally do not catch peaks as well as discrete, as they have a much slower attack, as the compressor reacts to a light signal representing the sound passing through, hence its name, optical compressor. If you're wanting to catch the peaks, discrete is definitely a much better option. Now I've used an optical which is the one up here, as I'm not really using it to control any peaks, but more so as a smooth or kind of general compression that's just gently gluing everything together. To finish off the chain, I've got the trusted L2. Now this may too be getting replaced soon. I'm still doing some tests with different limiters, but the L2 is winning at the minute. I'm leaving 0.2 decibels for any intersample peaks that may occur on the listener's end. I'd like to do a separate video really going over in detail my mastering chain and why I'm using the plugins that I'm using. Now what you're seeing isn't a complete chain, but it is what I felt was needed on this track. So on to the last segment of this video, the key takeaways. My three key takeaways for this episode are Number one, when people hear the word sampling, they instantly think in most cases of sampling music or a musical riff or elements from a record. I want you to think about sampling drums or random effects, just as Kashmir Cat did in this record more often. Number two, don't be afraid to consult session players to add an acoustic element into your track. There are tracks in which a bass guitar would work much better than an 808, or even the combination of the two, like in this track. Consulting musicians can be much harder and more costly, but if it improves the track, it's 100% worth it. Number three, stop overcomplicating everything and don't be afraid to experiment. With Kashmir Cat, the hardest part for achieving the vocal synth lines would definitely be finding the right vocal sample and creating the melody. Both of which I'd imagine will be achieved through hours of playing around and trying out new things. I seriously doubt that Kashmir Cat woke up in the middle of one night with the Wolves melody playing over and over again in his head. That's just not the reality. I laugh when I hear people say that they're waiting for inspiration. It's just an escape goat to not put in the work. Get on the keyboard and start jamming. That's really when the inspiration and the ideas come. That's all I've got for you today, guys. I hope you learned something that you can take away and apply to your own records. If you did enjoy this video, I would highly appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of these tutorials. Remember to submit your projects for the Mix Mastery Series 2 if you haven't already. For everyone that has already submitted, thank you so much. I honestly did not expect that response. I'm really looking forward to kicking that series off mid-March. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. I'm out. Peace.